Hello everyone, Mr. Macanoodle here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, to make some skid plates for your Mad Torque rock crawler. That I think will help uh, save wear and tear on your on your motor housings, especially if you're in uh, you know smaller rocks and boulders. Um, first off, let me let me talk about the kind of material that I that I used. I was actually able to uh, use some polypropylene that, that I had in the uh, the uh, body shop that I worked in. Um, fairly thin, just just thick enough to uh, offer some protection. You don't want it too thick, or then it's it's going to uh, interfere with your ground clearance. As far as uh, finding materials, you could uh, you could go to All a Dollar and and just pick up one of their plastic garbage cans. That would that would work out just fine. Or uh, go to one of your car part stores and get a uh, one of their plastic mud flaps. Uh, you you don't want it too too stiff, but uh, limber enough that you can you can kind of form it to the shape that you need. The way that I formed mine was uh, I just heated up with my heat gun and then just kind of kind of rolled it around and let it cool off till I till I got to the shape that I wanted. As you can see, we'll start with the rear one because it, it was probably the easiest to uh, to make. I basically, just got some uh, card stock and and cut cut it to shape and then used it for a template to uh, trace onto the uh, polypropylene. You'll notice right right there I, I drilled a hole where I could put a zip tie. That's basically all that holds the, the rear one on so it was it was fairly simple to do. I'll come around and show you the, the front of it. It just kind of wraps around the motor housing. Just run the zip tie through it and run it up over the top, pull it good and tight. I I did use um, a couple of dabs of hot glue to kind of you know keep it from sliding from side to side. I think that I think the hot glue is just kind of up underneath there. Okay, I'll. Uh, We'll go to the front one now. Okay, here we are on the front one. It's a little more involved because uh, you're actually going to have to do a little bit of of drilling. You can see the small mounting screws where I had to drill drill down into the the support underneath. Um, you want to be careful on this one right here because you have you have a screw coming through from the back side. Make sure you drill that to where it's uh, it's not going to hit that screw. When I cut this one, I brought it up high enough that it would protect this this cross piece, and that's helped a lot when I when I get into the rocks. Um, I oh on this one another zip tie on the back to kind of hold it in place. I'll have to I'll flip it over uh, in a few minutes and show you uh, where I routed the zip tie. Also while we're at it, let me something that I noticed notice that. I have mounted my left shock on the outside of the frame. I think that's the way it should be. It it puts the shock at a straighter angle. If you'll notice the right one, it kind of makes it uh, kind of go off to the side, and and the lower mount is kind of kind of on a weird angle. It's my feeling that it should be mounted this way. I'll, uh, when I flip it over on its feet, I'll show you uh, 
show you more about what I'm what I'm talking about. Also, let me show you my uh, my glue on weights that I put on the the wheels. I can't remember how many ounces I have. I know it's not enough. I'm going to put these on the back and probably double or triple uh, the amount of weight I put on the front. I got these at my uh, where I buy my tires. Okay, I'll, I'm going to go over some other small problems that I that I had with my rock crawler and uh, give me just a minute and I'll flip it over and we'll talk about that. Okay, here's <coughs> excuse me. Here's what everything looks like from the top. Um, I want you to notice my my shocks. I put the like I said, I put the right one on the outside, and the left one is the way that both of my rock crawlers came. And I just don't feel that that's right. You will notice that it it puts this mount at a weird angle, and it was actually rubbing my uh, motor power lead so I, I moved I moved the mound up but I think if it, I think if the shock was mounted on the outside like I have mine um, it would cure the problem anyone else you know has any ideas or thinks that I've maybe I'm not right in my thinking let me know okay this is how I routed my um, zip tie you want to be careful where it joins right here that you don't have it up up in this area it will hit it will hit your suspension when you uh, when you can when it's compressed all the way um, oh one other problem I had one of my leads um, had a cold solder joint on it and I had an intermittent problem so I just popped the popped the top off the uh, speed control there and uh, was able to get underneath it and, and re-solder it so if any of you are having any problems you might want to check that <coughs> uh, but, oh also you'll notice I have an off-colored uh, hub nut here. I had to buy that from my local hobby shop. You want to check those. I, when I was in the smaller rocks it uh, it spun that off and I, I lost it. So keep an eye on those. Keep them tight. Other than that I think uh, I think I've covered uh, most of the minor problems I've had. I've really enjoyed the, the rock crawler. It's uh, It's been a lot of fun and so much fun that we <coughs> we bought another one. Okay, that's it for Mr. McAnoodle. I hope I hope this helps you out. If you know if you're wanting to to build uh, your own skid plates. See you later.